Hi guys, it's great to have you back again. If it's your first time with me and you like the kind of videos I make, then please hit that subscribe button. Today, we have a detailed view of soldering on a replacement tone pot. This procedure is also similar for the volume or blend. The wiring on this passive guitar will look pretty much the same as on a passive bass. So if you're following through to fix your bass, then stick with me and hopefully you'll be able to complete this repair yourself. Once we've gained access to the components, it's a simple matter of getting the broken pot out. I like to use a spanner where I can. Pliers are okay, but I find I'm less likely to slip and I don't chew up the nut when I'm using a spanner. So here's the broken pot and here's the replacement. The parts for this repair were bought by the guy who brought in the guitar. As you can see, the replacement is slightly larger. This is perfectly acceptable. There's plenty of room in the cavity for this. A small adjustment of the mounting hole was needed. A tapered reamer worked well here. Although a drill, sandpaper on a wooden dowel, or a file would have also been fine. The difference in size was minimal. I'll take off the locating pin. This is not needed. On a passive instrument, the tone pot will have a capacitor soldered to it. That's the green rectangular component I'm desoldering that you can see here. Sometimes these are circular and flat, or cylindrical. The rest of the wires can just be cut off. No need to desolder, there's plenty of wire spare. It's just a matter now of stripping the wires back and soldering them into the same positions on the new pot. I just made a note of the arrangement before I cut them off the old one. Thinning the wires before soldering will make it easier for them to join onto the pot later. The pot has a large thermal mass, so don't be surprised that you have to hold your soldering iron on for quite some time before the solder melts. I'll keep testing and you'll suddenly see when the body of the pot becomes hot enough to take the solder. And there it goes.
Capacitors, unlike resistors, have a positive and negative terminal. To avoid any problems, put the same leg on the pot body as you took off the old pot. Try again. Now it comes to soldering both the capacitor and wire to the body. Remember I said earlier that the body has a large thermal mass. Well this is where you can easily make a mistake. What you need to do is heat up the body first so the solder melts and then push the wire and capacitor leg into the solder. If you try to put the wire on top of the body and heat up both, the sleeving around the wire will start to melt before the solder is ready. OK, there it goes. Now just push the wire and capacitor into it. And there we have it. Just trim off the ends and we're done. Did anyone spot that the knobs don't match? They're a slightly different style. We're almost done. So thank you for watching, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.